So what I want to do is we talked in general about these plugins and we went into a little detail on redirection. Uh, I'm going to go into detail now on Yoast SEO and again if you've got a WordPress kind of website this will be great. If you don't have a WordPress kind of website you'll be able to do something similar to what I'm talking about but you're going to need to figure out your own website's interface or buttons or however your website accomplishes this. So let me give you an overview of what Yoast SEO looks like and then we'll get into detail. On a WordPress site it's going to have uh, it's going to have its own SEO icon right here. And when we talked about setting up Webmaster Tools two weeks ago, one of the things I mentioned was the importance of a sitemap. Look at this. The SEO plugin has a sitemap creator and manager. So under SEO, I have a, next, a brand new XML sitemaps. And this is what I said previously, that I don't bother creating my own sitemap. It's technical, and I, and I don't want to bother with it. So... Um, this plugin will do it for me. And the good thing is that whenever anything changes on my site, the sitemap rewrites itself to be most current and updates on the search engines. So if I am blogging and creating content on a regular basis, I need to let the search engines know also that something is new because eventually they'll get around to finding my new content. But these search engines, even if they're running 24 hours a day, aren't going to find your site very quickly. So with a sitemap, you're kind of sort of jumping the line to some degree. And you get this file that on the surface looks pretty simple, but behind the scenes is a very technically written XML document that you, you have to say it down to the, to the second when, you're, when your last modification was done and all of that stuff. So I don't bother writing this myself. You get a plugin to do it because these will get quickly complex, especially on your screens like posts. So this is basically a sitemap full of all of your links and all of your content. And on something like this, this gets much more complicated. Here's one entry. Here's one entry, and you have to write it in UTC time, you know, Greenwich Mean Time, and your priority, and what image is attached to it, and all of this complex. I don't, I don't do that. The plugin will do it. And I know that other software like Squarespace and such does it for you. But um, that's one of the things that this does. What this plugin also does is it in integrates your social media really well. There's a little social media button here. Basically what you do is you attach to it all of the social medias that you're on, which obviously I need to update this. But I, I've got here the address of all my social media profiles that I would add to it. You might say, well, why do you need to do that if you've already got your social media buttons there? This is more for people to see and see, oh, he's on Instagram, let me click. But then this behind-the-scenes version is more for the search engines, for the search engines to know that not only are you on your website, but you've also got a MySpace for some reason. And so you can put in all of your popular social networks there. To inform Google about your social profiles, we need to know the URLs. Okay, And then in detail, I can go in. This one I did work on. Um, you, can, uh, you can use Facebook's Open Graph thing, which is basically... Facebook itself has a built-in search engine which searches Facebook. And when someone finds you on Facebook or through a Google search, they can show you specific information. So if I have a Facebook account, uh, I can make that look really nice. Or if someone is on their Facebook and wants to share my blog post to their Facebook, here's how I optimize it to look the best for Facebook. I want them to use this icon. I want them to have this description. So you've seen that when you share something on Facebook, it automatically fills itself in with some details. This is how you can control that detail. If you don't specify this, Facebook will try to take something from your website to show for it. But if you customize it like this, that could be useful. Same thing with Twitter. If someone uh, shares your content via a tweet, you can have it look a specific way. Pinterest, haven't gotten to that one, and then Google+. So there's this importance of social media 
attached to your website, and Yoast SEO helps you manage that. Titles and metas, titles and meta. So here is a way for us to deal with if I go to any search engine and for example look up how to use peach like a pro so if you do that kind of search the number one result will be our blog post about peach and then everything else about how to peel a peach like a pro so even though that blog post has probably been around years and ours just came out it's already getting up high on that result because of the optimization we've done. Um, anyway, this result then, uh, this text that appears here and this text that appears here can all be edited. And that's where we've got our long tail keywords. This particular blog post um, has the keywords of how to, it has the keyword of peach, it's got how to use peach, it's got here mentioning Google Plus and Facebook and the other networks, and then the newest social network. So I've got this variety of keywords that I'm trying to get found for. So we can either see what keywords have worked, which is what Google Analytics and Bing will tell us, or I can try to optimize for keywords. Both of, them's, both of those tactics are something you should engage in. I'm trying to get found for those keywords with this site, and I may have to run up against all of these other sites that are also mentioning Peach and How To, but via the things that we talk about in this class and social media, really helps us to be number one when you search this. Because there's these tutorials coming out of Social Media Examiner, and it's coming out of, you know, everyone's got a tutorial on Peach because it's the newest, hottest thing. And with this keyword phrase here, how to use Peach like a pro, the number one result is our blog post. Oh, as well as our YouTube video right there. Getting higher than ESPN for some reason. Um, so what I'm getting at is within this screen of titles and meta, this is how I can fine-tune some of these things. How do they appear when someone searches? We have this general um, settings, and then on the home page, on individual posts, to, uh, archives, and such. This the defaults will work just fine, but if I need to get advanced here, what I'm saying is what the home page description and title will look like is this. It will show the site name, whatever page we're currently looking at, a separator, and then its description. If I need to write a, all my keywords here, I can. I didn't write them here because you can also do it on individual pages. This would be defaults, and usually defaults are a starting point, but you still want to optimize page by page. General settings. Under general setting is a place for you to look at their tour, about what you've got, your info, so how are you going to appear on search, your info? When, I sh when we were setting up the webmaster tools, for some of you we set it up a certain way, and for others we did it this way. So here's another way for you to quickly add your webmaster verifications. Google, Bing, Yandex, Alexa. You add them here and then this verifies you on those search engines. I don't have it here because I did it on another way. You don't have to do it multiple ways. If I did it the Jetpack way, because Jetpack lets you do it as well, then I would not also do it here, because it's just going to write my code double. And it's not going to give me any extra benefit. For any of these tools that, that duplicate a feature, don't have, don't have them conflict. Don't use two social media plugins. 
two SEO plugins, two shopping carts are going to conflict. So these, these settings here under, under SEO are useful, but what's most useful is this. Once you've installed this plugin and actually go look at pages or posts in my blog, here I've only got one page, an about page, but at a glance, here's my page, and I see over here, I see your column green. This is something that gets added to your WordPress site once you've got this Yoast plugin. At a glance, I can check how optimized is my page or my post. It goes from gray, a gray dot meaning you haven't optimized it yet, a red dot meaning bad optimization, and then I forget which is which, then yellow or orange, one of those two, which is medium, and then green, which is really good optimization. So this plugin is looking at the, the latest techniques of optimization, and then it's giving you a rating quickly and a way to fix it, of course. I'll show that in a moment. Let me show that better over here under posts where I've got more to look at. So here taking a quick look, some of these have greens and some of them oranges and reds. Um, so these oldest ones from 2013, I haven't gotten around to fully optimizing them. And the thing about this plugin that I hesitate to, to say, and even the all-in-one SEO, is that I would not live and die by the, by the color of my posts and pages, meaning I don't need to get all of them to be green. I don't need all of them to get perfectly optimized. If I don't have a lot of content, then maybe yes, for all of my content I want to optimize. But if I've got a lot of content, so here's several blog posts. Here's you know 28 blog posts. Um, I don't need to have all of them perfectly optimized. Notice on some of them I haven't done it yet. And for some of them, even the newest ones are red. And even though I said red is terrible, I'm still not going to worry too much there, as I'll explain why in a moment in detail. So I like this plugin because at a glance it'll help me make these decisions. And for my own blog, you know, it's not such a big deal that I haven't gone page by page yet. For clients, I would because they're paying me. But let's say on this particular blog post, when I edit the post, I'll have a brand new little page down here, or item here, on, um, on SEO Yoast. This is, this is not available unless you have the plugin. And so here, it gives me a preview of what it looks like on a Google search. What's the focus keyword? What am I trying to get found by? Put in that. And then it tells me here what I'm doing well, what I'm not doing well. And so here I've got uh, two, four, six. I've got six greens, two oranges, and then four reds. So six not so goods and six goods. In general, then this whole blog post gets a not good, a red. But the more of these that you can get over to green, the better. And that's why I like this plugin because visually it's useful and then it also concretely tells me, for example, one of my reds says, the text contains 73 words. This is far too low and should be increased. Now, I would agree, but on mine it's so short because the main focus of my post is actually a video. I want people to see the video and have a little bit of text. So if I was writing a regular so it's this one here. If I was writing a regular blog post with a lot of detail, I definitely would bring that up and it'll tell you when you've gotten it right. But here I've got, you know, just this little bit of text here and a little bit of text here, and it's watch the video on Vimeo. That's my focus. These other blog posts might be more text heavy. And the text is valuable because the search engines understand text better than pictures or video or sound text can be processed by the search engines much easier. Then here we've got the focus keyword density, keyword density is 2.7, which is over the advised 2.5 maximum. The focus keyword was found two times. So this is obviously very skewed. I've got 73 words and two of them are that keyword. You can over optimize because the spammers 
they would put that keyword over and over and over and over because the ancient search engines would say, yeah, that's what that page is about because I see it 40 times, that keyword. Modern search engines are very discerning in that if you're going over 2.5% keyword density, you're a spammer. You're putting it way too many times. This one is okay because, again, it's such a short amount of text that two times is already over the limit. As I add a few more words here, it'll bring it back down to the proper under two and a half. No meta description has been specified, search engines will display copy from the page. Meaning I didn't go in here and manually write something. It took it from my from the first thing that I wrote, which for me is okay because I have the keyword showing up here. If you don't have your keyword automatically showing up on the first bit of text of your post, it's a good idea for you to edit this description to show the search engines what you want. This is just sort of being very strict and saying, you didn't choose one, the search engine will choose it for you, that's bad. But in my case, not really, because I do have the keyword there that will show up automatically. So I'm not going to go through each one of these, but um, good, the good about it is I use the focus keyword in my address. So I put the, that keyword, Mighty Thor, in the address. That's useful. The page title. Uh, I wrote at least 40 characters, so something to actually read here. I have an image and it has an alt tag, alt text. I haven't used this focus keyword before in my site. It's not going to get lost with the other pages of my site. I use that keyword on the first paragraph, so all of these things to do, again, I'm not going to worry to try to get all of them green. I'm going to try to get as many of them as possible to raise me up out of the red to medium or higher. This is the regular one. So what's cool about this is that then you can make your changes, save it, and then it'll scan your page and then give you more recommendations. So I made a little update. I'm going to update it. Well, actually, it already, it already went from red to orange right here. That's different. You, you, have, you used to have to save it, and then it'll scan it. But now, it does it in real time. So I've saved that. I went from red to orange with a little bit more effort. Maybe get it over to green. So notice I got another, I got another green there. Can you use code again so you can see what the post was, and then... What it's telling me is that I needed to edit these two things a little bit, so I did. When I edited those, then I simply clicked Update, and then it rescanned it automatically, and then it gave me the higher grade. Sometimes, and this is a bug, people always remark on this. A meta description has been specified, but it does not contain the focus keyword. My focus keyword is Mighty Thor. My description, blah, 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 Mighty Thor. Clearly it's there. But this is a bug that's happened for this plugin that everyone's like, why haven't you guys fixed this yet? So I'm not worried about that one. I do have this meta description. It does have my focus keyword. Maybe because this is lowercase and this is uppercase, that should not matter at all. So I'm not worried that I have that red one right there. 
I'm not going to take a moment to write more text, but maybe that's the next thing I would do. 73 words is very minimal. Uh, I try to get it more to 100, 200 or so, but again, I'm focusing on this video instead of the actual text. So now when I go back to all posts, this one has gone up from red to orange, and I would do something very similar to the other ones. I would say at the minimum, try to get them to orange, which is medium. Better is green, of course, but don't beat yourself up if you don't get all of them green, because this is all a big package, isn't it? I'm doing optimization on my site, SEO, and I'm doing optimization out of my site, SEM. I'm tweeting about this, I'm posting it on Google Plus to give me uh, hits, and so it's all wrapped together. And this could be tedious, especially if you're adding this after the fact. You've got a website, it has 30 pages, and now I have to go back and optimize them all? Yes and no. One way is optimize your most newest posts. So let me make notes here. Uh, strategy for per page optimization. do it um, as you create content because let's say I'm gonna write a brand new blog post I'm gonna be also crafting that SEO content at the same time so ideally you're doing it as you create content I have 20 pages that I I have five or seven pages that I need to go back to do well if you need to optimize old content, one, you could start from newest content and then go backwards. Or use your analytics to check most popular pages and start with those. So check your statistics in WordPress.com or Google Analytics or whatever you use, Bing Webmaster, and check what are the pages that are getting the most traffic. Go back and check those first. Are those the most optimized? Could I still improve the description a little bit more. I'm getting hits over to my blog post about Batman number 500. I'm going to go back and, oh, I had that one on red. I can do a little bit more to get it to, to orange or green, and then that could drive more traffic to, to that content. More traffic to that content coupled with other things could then give me more traffic in the site in total. So using something like this plugin, I would edit my dis my meta description, which Yoast shows it in WordPress like this. There's the title of your post, the description of your post, and in the old days there would also be a box for your meta keywords. Nowadays, meta keywords really have no no importance. The search engines don't really look at those anymore because they feel that they can be artificial and they can be abused. Because I can just put a bunch of keywords. Comic book, comma, Marvel, comma, Thor, comma, cool, comma, read this, comma. You know, I could be putting all of these keywords. I could be using the keywords like the spammers. So now the, the search engines are like, we don't even look at keywords anymore. But we do look at your description, and that should be... You guys should use your keywords, your long tail keywords. And your title, because obviously these are the things that we show on the search engine results. So those are the things definitely to optimize.
And as you develop, oh yes, question. Um, it's not on like where you're at right now. It's put the, on the general settings tab. Mm -hmm. When you do the webmaster tools, um, was, the quick question is when you're doing, when you, it says like the Bing and stuff. What actually are you supposed to put in there so they can find you? Well, just to confirm that I'm looking at the same thing as yours. Where where am I where am I going? On the Yoast with SEO in general tab, and that has uh, if you click on Webmaster Tools, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, That's for you to verify when you set up Bing or Google Analytics Webmaster. The verification code that those sites give you, you paste them in here. So, so like, let's say, for instance, before we had already verified it, how would I go back to get the code to put in there? Well, that's a little bit off, off, off my topic at the moment, but you, you do want to log into your Bing Analytics, bing.com slash toolbox, and um, you're going to have your site, and somebody's there's going to be a button. If you haven't verified it yet, there'll be a button to say verify. If you have verified, I think there's, like, a little settings button for you to get your verification code. We can look at it in detail uh, a little bit later. Right, thank you. So here, Yoast really helps me to deal with my long tail keywords. As I made that, as I did that activity where I'm writing my long tail keywords and such, and I develop this strategy of what I'm going to write about, then I'm going to write about it. I'm going to write about comic books and comic book collecting and comic con and all of that. Those are the keywords that I'm thinking about that I want to get found for. So I'm going to create content along those lines. All of the content basically of this blog is about that. Notice my tagline also. Comic books, comic con, and cosplay. All the cool stuff. So I'm putting this content out on my blog on that regular basis because I want to get found, I want to get traffic for this, for this endeavor. Let's see here, Comic Con, bingo. So it's not number one at the moment, perhaps, because I haven't re-optimized it very recently, but there was also, I had here, I had a blog post. I have a blog post that's Comic Con Bingo. And it would, be, it would appear on page one, but now it's maybe on page three or a little bit lower because I haven't gone back to optimize it again. And also Conan O'Brien did his own version, so of course he's taking over. But um, I have a blog post about that topic and it should be here somewhere. But I'm creating content and using keywords and um, the Yoast plugin really helps me to optimize that way. If you don't have Yoast, if you don't have WordPress, check your software. Somewhere there, there should be some screen about SEO or meta description, meta tags, and you're going to apply your keywords. So it's not a big secret. You've got your meta keywords. You're just going to apply them either on descriptions or in your content. And that's how you show the search engines what your content is about. So we're talking about WordPress recommendations, WordPress plugin recommendations, and then I'm going to move on to intro to SEM and such. But any questions so far? Um, yeah, I, you're on page three of this thing, and uh, I was just wondering, you, you do a lot, and you know a lot about this, so can you kind of just draw the conclusion that the people on the first two pages uh, are all paying them for their keywords? I mean, are they doing the same thing you're doing, or are they just shouting out money? Let's take a look. So here's the first page of results. None of the results that are showing up are listed anywhere as ads. These are all organic. The first result is from facebook.com from Dorkly. So 
if I go look at their Facebook, they so they were up for a while before the issue. Yeah, 2011. Okay. They've also got a verified page on Facebook that goes a, a big a big way to to ver to rank verification and and such. So what letter is that? L P S uh, I H Q. I'm just trying to see here also how much how many likes does the page have? 667,000 likes. So longevity, their blog post has been around from 20, since 2011. Authority, they are verified on Facebook and have more than half a million likes. And content, they posted this 22 minutes ago one hour ago, two hours ago, and then people are commenting and all of that. So they've got their website, they've got their, um, they, they, they've got those three pillars, that's why they're number one. Next, from the San Diego Comic Con unofficial blog, this is to their, to their website, but they're one of the big names in Comic-Con industry. Um, this is from only last year. Mine's been around longer, but they've got a lot of traffic to their website. They're one of the big names in this space of Comic-Con reporting. So basically all of these I can I can get I can I can get the details about um, that they all fill, fit into those th three big things. Longevity, authority, content. And my particular one um, has fallen off the, the top because maybe I haven't, you know, it's, it's longevity is there enough, but my authority, you know, who am I really? What, how big am I compared to the Washington Times, cheeseburger.com, you know, these big traffic websites. So I have to make up for it with content. I have to make up with it posting about it on Twitter and on Facebook and on Google Plus and sharing it as much as I can to give me that authority to make up for it because I, I was in the top one page but now it's fallen down and let's see over here. See here on Bing they say laughing squid is number one rather than dorkly on their Facebook. There's instructables also. Time out. Myth. Pinterest. Flavor wire. Pinterest. So yeah, not there also, but notice what also appears high up here. Videos. So focusing on videos as well. Questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to be better on Bing than Google, and I tend to like prefer the Outlook and all the Microsoft stuff over the Google stuff. Can they detect whether or not you use your Gmail or your Outlook more? And are you like one of their guys, and they're like rank you higher in your site? I really don't think so. I think that would be a little too far for them to really, you know target people or punish people for not using their services. You know, I do have to have it in the back of my mind that that's a possibility, but I don't really think they would do that and I wouldn't spend too much time really wondering that. I would just try to do a good job on my content and sharing it and so forth. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit because um, I've also got here for today's agenda intro to SEM, so search engine marketing. Uh, let me tell you here a couple of techniques of SEM which is what are you doing outside of your website. Um, one of the things that I would say is let's I'm going to give a few examples of it but the big idea of it right here let's say SEM strategies be active on related sites. So they can, we can do this many ways. The big concept is be active on related sites. So I've got this website about comics. I want to find other comic-related websites and be active on their website. 
So one of the big ones, sketched.com without the vowels. Sketched.com is, is about comic books and they're one of the big ones and they've got articles about it, so many aspects of comics and they've got a podcast and everything. And what I mean is be active here, not just visit the site and read it. Be active. And here's one for example. Uh, former classmate and, and friend, um, Ed Sherman, owns, a, owns this comic shop in Mission Valley. And so he's got a, a featured piece right here on one of these big websites. And so what this article is, this column is, basically the state of the industry of comics in his shop last year. So it's a technical analysis of what's sold and all of that. So, okay, great. What's, what's in it for me? I have a comic book blog, and what I can do is I can go to related um, sites, and usually there will be a way for you to, at the very bottom usually, comment. So, I went to the site five days ago, logged in. Usually you have to log in or create an account, but you can oftentimes attach it to a Facebook or a Twitter to quickly log in. And then I've posted something related to the article, and I can do this obviously or not. I could have then had a link here. I could have said, yeah, great article, whatever, Thor number one, great, here's my video. You know, I could have been that obvious, but because this is someone else's website, we probably have moderators which look at this stuff and say, this is too spammy, we won't let them, we won't let it through. They could have simply the Akismet plugin, and, and I could written something that Akismet thought was spammy, so it wouldn't go through. I didn't put in a very specific you know, obvious link, but I do have my own profile here, which is an active link, and that takes me back to my website. So, for yourself, you're going to research a few websites, as many as you want, really. You're going to research websites related to your topic. You're going to be active on related sites, which basically means, for example, comment on someone someone else's blog. This is how you spell Elsa's blog. Question? Would it be good of you to like make an account with Sketch and also add content on there as well? Being that you seem to be to hit like your related sites. It depends on the site, but overall yes. This particular site you, you create an account just to comment, to my to my knowledge, not to actually create articles. Uh, I believe they might have some sort of system where you submit an article to get exposure, so that would be good too. I'll, I'll write that down in a moment. But in this particular one, it's creating an account to be able to comment. So comment on someone else else's blog. Submit content. <laughs> Someone else's blog. When I say blog, but that's website, that's whatever other presence they're on. Comment on someone else's blog. Submit content to someone else's blog. See if over at Comic Vine or Sketched or whatever they allow you to do submissions. So then you'll it's you're doing in a sense guest blogging. You're creating content for someone else. The point of that is you are then getting exposure on one of these sites that has traffic and such, and you're going to have a link back to your own website. Either an obvious post, like right here for Ed, he's writing about how well he's done this year and such, and what the top selling thing and stuff, and you know, My Little Pony, number one, did really well. So he's got then a link at the top. The artist, right at, I mean, the, the owner of the site, right away gave him a link at the top here, right to his home page. Oh, okay, nice. So then you probably submitted it to the site. Yeah, this one, I forgot how he did it exactly if, if Sketch reached out to him or Ed reached out to Sketch, I forget. But um, yeah, he got a direct link, backlink, well, we were talking about last week. Exactly, that's a great backlink. 
is a highly trafficked website in this space, and there's a direct link to his homepage. First line. So then you're going to uh, you're going to be active. You're going to go to other people's websites or blogs, comment at the minimum. A little higher level up is to actually submit content to them. Before I try to submit, I would find out their submission policy. I won't, I don't want to write something and then send it to them and say, sorry, we don't take submissions. I wasted my time. You want to check if a particular site does accept guest submissions. Be active on related sites uh, related to this, obviously, social, social media. This is a bit more of an involved process. I talk about it in the social media class. But in general, here's what I would do. Let's say Twitter. Uh, most likely this and most websites have a Twitter account. So, yes, sketched has twitter.com slash sketched. So this strategy is about 1,500 followers. Potentially, that's 1,500 people that might also be interested on my own comic website. But this means I create an account on Twitter, and I go into their tweets to see... Um, who is active on their tweets. I can see here two people favorited this tweet and I can look at these stats, they're public basically. And I can go in and see who on Twitter liked that tweet. And because Twitter is so public, I can then start to tweet toward those people that liked that tweet. If they've already shown an interest on something related to my niche, they might show an interest if I start to tweet to them. And yeah, tweeting to strangers, random people, but with a target, with a goal of reaching those that really could reply positively. And it's very low, the possibility that someone replies saying, who are you, leave me alone, reported. Uh, if you're contacting, if you're connecting with people on social media related to a topic and in a positive way, you will get positivity back. Positivity on social media breeds positivity. So if you are positive to people on social media and starting these conversations to, um, to keep it positive, related to each other, then you're going to get some of that back. So like this one, for example, Chris Samney um posting something and it's got a lot of activity it's 133 retweets 425 favorites those are those are much more those are indicators of people really being open to perhaps what my website is about comic books they're coming commenting about comic books i could reach out to them on twitter i could get followers from that I can get replies from that. I'm just trying to get readers to read my stuff, but if I was trying to sell something, that might come from sales as well. That's the big topic of social media, which is what we do in the social media class. Related to social media, I'd say YouTube. Um, it is something to start to think about, to look into, to creating YouTube videos. You don't need any fancy equipment. You can use your own cell phone as long as it's HD quality, which they all are basically nowadays. You don't want to use that flip phone to try to record yourself. You want to use your, your HD quality phone. And um, you can be, do it as simply as holding it up to yourself and talking, although that's not going to be the best. You want to use a tripod or you want to put your phone on a flat surface. You want to do something so that the camera's not shaking around. 
this is a big topic. I talk about it in social media class, but what I can say about that is if you're going to you engage in YouTube, what that means is either create content for YouTube or going back to the previous one here about commenting. I'll show an example of that in a moment. Comment on YouTube. If you're going to create your own content, the thing about video which on the one hand is obvious and on the other is not, is not, is that what makes a good video is having good audio and good visuals. Obviously, that's what a video is, audio and video. You want to have good audio and video. Because if you've got a beautiful HD camera, but I'm standing this far away from you, recording you, and I can't even hear you, so you've got good video, but you've got bad audio, it's a bad video. I can't hear the person. If I'm close up to the person and I can hear them well, but I've got really bad light, and this might look like good light, but really these things, even the most advanced ones, struggle in low light. I'm going to get as much light as possible. So I can hear you okay, but I can't see you very well. So good audio, bad video? It's a bad video. You want to make sure when you create the content as best as possible with good audio, and good video. And yes, it happens that there's a viral hit that looks terrible and sounds terrible. You don't know about this. It happens so random sometimes. But if you create good looking and good sounding content, that will help you get hits and traffic and such. Yes? Yeah, um, let's say we're kind of spread thin and we still want to use YouTube. Um, would it be a uh, advantage to have just a channel, kind of like your favorite Photoshop? Uh, movies or whatever. Uh, so we're not creating it, we're just putting it on the channel. Hmm, good question. From my experience, I would really say to focus on original creation because simply having a channel full of what you like is giving traffic and credibility to others. Because you're, you're saying, we like this video and that video and this video, and, and maybe it relates to your business and such, but really you're still guiding them back to watch their video, not your video their video with their description that takes them to their shop. If I make my own videos, I have my own description with my own keywords and my own link to my shop. So you never know really what's going to hit, what's going to go viral here on our company. YouTube, we have various things about tutorials and such. And so, for example, here there's a tutorial on how to use Peach Like a Pro. Not only is it a blog post, but it's also a video. It's a 12-minute video recording my screen, what I'm doing on my iPad, narration, a little bit of visual interest, and then we upload it. Two weeks old, it's getting close to 400 views, pretty respectable. Within that description, I can then add links. You can put active links in a YouTube description to drive more traffic. Three months ago, how to code in HTML5. So basic HTML5 website in seven minutes. Only 36 views. People might say that's more valuable than learning this flash in the pan social network, but there's a lot of competition there also. And then near the same time we created build an Android app with Visual Studio in five minutes. And that's reaching close to 12,000 views now. We don't know how long it's going to take. Five minutes long? Is it because it's five minutes long? Is it because this topic is more on people's minds than this topic? Who knows? The more of this content that you create, you're going to find your target audience. You might have an idea. I'm always going to do videos on Android, and that might be your target audience. Or you might vary it up. So we've got a variety of different videos. This one about food, staging, how to shoot a good photo of a setting up food shot, 30 views. This one right here, advertising our, some of our apps, 98 views here, 93 views on that. So this is definitely a big endeavor, the video, but it doesn't have to be. It could simply be set up your camera and talk to it and upload that. But make sure you've got good audio and good video. And something might actually hit. And YouTube optimization, it's a big thing also. I talk about it in the social media class. Because here I have to think about 
what description do I write, my keywords, and other things like that. But the second item here about creating content is related to commenting on YouTube. Same thing. I'm going to go in. This is a strategy that I used to help get traffic to some of these things. I looked up right here. Peach Social Network. And it's going to give me the result here of all of these of all of these companies and I go into other people's video and I comment on their video saying great advice your tip was really nice here's our take on it so if you go look at these other videos you're gonna see that we commented on it as well um, we saw that it was about 400 views but for some reason sometimes this number doesn't add up here um, so two weeks ago, one week ago, they were getting up a little high, but they might have many more subscribers. We've got about 60 subscribers. They might have here many more. Popularity, popularity breeds popularity. Yeah, with 14,000 subscribers, of course they're going to get more views a little faster than us. But we've got, at the moment, 60. And this, honestly, when we, we had, you know, like 10 subscribers, and then after this viral video of Android development, it's gone up you know, to 60 views so far, and I keep checking the stats and people keep subscribing to the blog, to, to the uh, channel. When I look at this, uh, I look at that page right now, and with the 11,000 views of the Android app video, I would think that you'd make another one like that, because that's like your biggest uh, success. Uh, I mean, if you're doing this with visibility... I'm yes, sure. yeah, definitely. Um, this is showing that there seems to be an appetite for this kind of video. So definitely another one is coming up about Android from another angle because if you do the exact same kind of video, what's the point of that? So from another angle, like what's the next step or what's another way to do it? So that's, that's coming up as well. Uh, so in addition to a follow-up kind of video like that, we would also put other kinds of videos to see what other avenues we can also explore to because to do the same kind of video over and over might not really be long-term viability. So those are some SEM strategies to think about. We can only touch upon them because the social media class focuses in on them. How to create the account, how to get followers, and followers can equal traffic. And all of that equals also authority and content and the longer you do it, the more that it helps. Let's take uh, one more break, but any questions at this point? Okay, it's uh, 2.50. Let's take our break until 3. When we come back, we'll look at a couple more items on the agenda. And then the last thing will be, if you'd like your website to be... to be... Uh, critiqued, we can put your website up here and we'll talk about it. So we'll be back at 3. <laughs>